Okay. So, uh, welcome everybody for our um, uh, Department of Marine Geosciences <coughs> weekly meeting. Uh, today we are hosting uh, Sarita Ashkenazi Polivoda from the Dead Sea and Arava Science Center. Um, Sarit completed all her degrees, including a postdoc at the Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences at Ben Gurion University of the Negev in Be'er Sheva. She is currently working on late Cretaceous plantic and benthic foraminifera and recent benthic foraminifera as bioindicator of past and present environment. Since 2012, she is working as a researcher at the Dead Sea and Arava Science Center. And, and, and as a senior lecturer and head of the Central Arava branch of the Dead Sea and Arava Science Center. So today, Sarit is going to talk about the collapse and recovery of the Tetian upwelling ecosystem following the Cretaceous Paleogene mass extinction. So, Sarit, the podium is yours. And thank you again. Thank you. And good afternoon to everyone. I, I'm glad to virtually be in Haifa. And uh, thank you, Nicolas, for presenting me and to invite invited me to give this talk. And I have to say, I'm uh, I'm very excited and nervous to be here today. This is the first time that I've presented uh, this project. Although the background uh, for it is the main area that I'm working on it for the past 20 million years. Sorry, 20 years. Don't calculate my age. And during my master and PhD thesis, uh, together with Sigal, and of course, together with Ari later. And I have to say before I will start that it's quite, quite remarkable that after so many years of working on this high productivity sequence in Israel, this sequence is still surprises us every time from the beginning. And all the time we find something to work on. So today I will talk about the new study, uh, the collapse and recovery of the upper link ecosystem following the KPG boundary. And this study started by accident. I will talk to, about it later. And there is still a lot of unfinished edges that hopefully will be resolved uh, after all the plant analysis. So this, is this study is a joint effort by of you are from uh, the Geological Survey of Israel, Sigal from VGU, Nicolas Tibulet from Denmark, and Alon Amrani. So we start, uh, before we talk about the KPG boundary, let's start and talk about the late Cretaceous, a period that starts about 94 million years ago, and ended, as we know, with a big catastrophe with the KPG mass extinction, as we all know it, the dinosaur extinction. But what happened during the late Cretaceous um, that led to the damage of all uh, creatures? So during the late Cretaceous, Israel and the entire southern uh, Tethys Levant area was, uh, was under the sea, covered by the Tethyan Sea. And the deposition in Israel during this time took place under two major events. The first one uh, was uh, influenced by a tectonic activity, the Syrian arc system, that caused the formation into subparallel northeast, southwest anticlinal ridges and synclinal basins. This deformation caused actually a topographic change in the seafloor uh, that resulted in lateral bi basinal uh, changes in thickness, fascias, and fauna. The second um, uh, thing that influenced on the deposition, and more important one maybe, is the development of high productivity upwelling regime along the southern margin of the Tethys due to a combined effect of global post-Antonian cooling, sea level high stand, and plate tectonic. Uh, this regime persisted in our area over 20 million years, or maybe today we think more than that even, uh, and produced sediments enriched in silica, carbon, and phosphate 
the holy treason of the upcoming regime. Um, and for those of you who don't know, modern coastal upwelling systems are usually located on the western margin of the continent. Um, and they are characterized by upper productivity at the surface caused by injection of nutrients from the uh, medium uh, part of the column water to the upper part of the column water, uh, cause a massive production of organic matter in the surface, uh, resulted, well, all those organic matter dead in the end get to the seafloor and resulted in bottom water, which is typically depleted in oxygen. And the biomineral that accompany this system are rich in silica carbon and phosphate. In Israel, uh, as I said, this regime persists over 20 million years and, and produced sediment uh, enriched with organic matter with great lateral and basinal changes. Um, as you can see in this uh, illustration, in the, in the southern, in the, the Negev, we see different uh, lithology, a thick sequence of chert and phosphate and organic rich carbonate accumulated uh, as known as the Menucha Mishash and Grave formation. And at the same time in Northern Israel and Central Israel, we get organic rich carbonate uh, known as the NZ team formation. Uh, and this rock have a uh, great economical potential as a hydrocarbon. So during the past 20 years, we work a lot on the geochemistry of this sequence and I mainly work on the plantic and benthic foraminiferal assemblages which exhibit a dramatic, uh, first there was very unique uh, plantic and benthic foraminiferal assemblages to this area because of the unique uh, high productivity regime, but also they, uh, they exhibit a dramatic faunal turnover from the Companion to the Maastrichtian. Um, and during these years, we all the time learn something new and even change our hypotheses and conclusion in order to explain the change in the unique foraminiferal assemblages along the sequence, uh, which is in the, in the beginning rely mainly on the common trucks model and interpret to reflect a reduction on the productivity uh, from the companion to the Maastrichtian. But later we change this conclusion uh, and we proposed, Ari proposed that there was not reduction in productivity uh, between, from the companion to the Maastrichtian, and there was actually a change in the organic matter source, which means change in nutrition. Uh, and this is what caused the faunal turnover. Actually, we see a shift from uh, diatomaceous ooze and nutrition of diatomation to coccolate for it, or to calcareous ooze. And this is what caused the benthic foraminiferal assembly changes. But even with this model, we all believe that the high productivity regime was reduced, sorry, reduced and damaged through the end of the Maastrichtian. We believe this because first in the negative, uh, we actually didn't see any remain of high organic matter in the upper Maastrichtian. And in the Shfela in central Israel, we, this part of the section was missing. Uh, so, but uh, then a few years ago, a fake oil and gas company uh, received the license in the Golan South uh, province of Israel to drill into the upper Cretaceous rock. There was a few uh, whales and one of the whales were a completely and beautiful core, as you can see here, a dark a oil shell or organic rich carbonate. And they give us some samples to analyze the top, the bottom, and the middle uh, of this core for bias, to do biostatigraphy using plant foraminifera, of course. 
and because they need to know the age of the book. And surprisingly, uh, we discovered that this section crossed the KPG boundary, which means that the high primary productivity regimes that prevail during the late Cretaceous continue uninterferingly into the Paleogene, which we, I mean, for us, it was a, a little bit of shock uh, because it was against all predictions and uh, previous knowledge regarding the continuous of the upwind regime. And also because what we know about the KPG event. And so what we know about the KPG event, what happened in the KPG, um, the end of the Cretaceous, uh, about 66 point uh, to the, its road uh, 0.4, but it, now it's 66.02. A million years ago, at the Cretaceous Paleogen uh, boundary, mass, a great mass extinction event. Um, uh, the most famous group that got extinct, in, extinct is the dinosaur, but not only the dinosaur. You can see only uh, also on land and on, in the marine relief, a lot of creatures got extinct. Um, this is an example of the plantic foraminifera, how they behave around this uh, boundary. And you see this is the uh, Cretaceous. So a lot of plantic foraminifera got extinct in the uh, boundary and a lot, some of them continue for some uh, time after and we get a new uh, species after the border. But what happened, the big question for most of the people regarding the KPG event is what killed the dinosaur or what caused the extinction? And this, and this question is subject of many scientific works and one of the largest and most turbulent debates in the geology. Uh, but we're not going to talk about this uh, today. Uh, I will just uh, briefly explain what are the theory. There is two main theory regarding the, the primary cause for the KPG mass extinction. The first one is the impact of the asteroid uh, in Chicxulub. And the second one is uh, the Khan volcanism eruption in, uh, in India. While in the background of all of this uh, catastrophic event, there is a lot of environmental changes the occur in the late Maastrichtians, such as sea level changes uh, or sea level drops uh, due to the formation of ice sheet in the polar and a lot of climate change. And I don't want to get into this two period, but I will only mention the uh, famous KPG section in Israel. So this is the, in Israel, the famous KPG section found in Oraa or uh, seen. Um, this is the KPG boundary, and who is this? Uh, and this is Ari, for the one of you that don't recognize him, is standing just above the boundary. So uh, although this section is not completed and misses, missing the famous clay layers, but maybe not, we will talk about it later, uh, it is very important uh, section in the world. Yeah, it, some of the um, most interesting thing regarding this uh, period discovered here, such as the bloom of the plantic form and survival species, the Lumbilitria cretacea. Uh, but I just mentioned a new study, a recent study by Keller et al. from 2020. And they found, we found an evidence for the Deccan volcanism, volcanic activity um, in the uh, Oral section. This is the Oral section, and this, this is the less section, uh, the, the holotype for this section. And all those peaks are mercury uh, high concentration, which are correlated to the same time interval, uh, sorry, to the eruption of the Deccan. The, uh, the the can when it erupts it's released a lot of mercury that's spread in the atmosphere 
and sinks very uh, fast. And then we see this high concentration um, correlated to the common uh, eruption. So during the, uh, the last 10,000 years of the Cretaceous, uh, we see a lot of eruption, a lot of um, uh, increase in, uh, in the mercury concentration, which is also related to a very hot uh, temperature and increase in uh, climate change. And now we're working on this section, on the oral section, and we're working on a species that called Gumblitria criticea, which is the KPG survivor species. And we try to collate its bloom uh, to the mercury concentrations. But this is outside. But whatever the main trigger for the environmental catastrophe is, uh, both theory, the asteroid and the volcanism, imply that the fault is on the primary producer. Uh, actually, they caused primary producer crashed that led to the extinction of all other groups. I mean, when the photosynthesis creatures are dead and there is no photosynthesis, there's nothing to eat and all other uh, creatures in the um, uh, food chain are also uh, dead and got extinct. Um, so the, um, the evidence for this crash is um, uh, the presence of a, it's a reduction in calcite production uh, exactly in the border, as you can see here, sorry. Uh, and the symbol of this is the clay layer that, that we found almost in all of the KPG uh, boundary in the world. Uh, and this, we found the clay because there is no uh, carbonate production. And also uh, we got a, a, a negative exertion of delta C13 due to enrichment of the light isotope that usually consumed during photosynthesis. Uh, so we, re we re return to the Golan High Court. Uh, so this is the core, you, will, you see it before. And this newly drilled core provides us a unique perspective on one of the most dramatic events in Earth's history, the KPG event. Did not, uh, but as we, we saw, it did not cause a major perturbation to the massive production. There is still high organic rich carbonate in this core. There is not, we, we, kid, we didn't find any evidence for a reduction for, of the high productivity, which is pretty, pretty enigmatic considering the standard dogma of global productivity crash at the KPG. Um, in addition, uh, uh, despite the global importance of the stout and tetis upwelling belt, this region was poorly studied uh, with respect to the collapse of the ecosystem following the KPG mass extinction. So therefore, the, uh, the overreaching goal of this research, research is to fill this gap uh, and study the collapse and the recovery phase of the ecosystem across this transition uh, in the upwelling belt. More specifically, um, we ask ourselves what was the primary productivity before and after the KPG boundary? Who were the main primary producer before and after the KPG? And how long were the recovery period based on geochemical and paleontological analysis? I will try to answer uh, on this question, but I don't uh, uh, promise to tell you. Um, so in order to do all this, we rely on wide range of paleontological and geochemical methodology uh, that are aimed to complement to each other and give a broad, broader insight into our working hypothesis. Uh, this includes, of course, biostatigraphy and paleoecology of foraminifera, including the isotope uh, signature, uh, biostatigraphy and paleoecology of calcareous nanoplankton, 
uh, isotopic profile of carbon, oxygen, sulfur, and uh, nitrogen of bulk organic uh, and inorganic phases, um, trace metal analysis, and biomarker analysis. So, of course, um, well, okay, so uh, one can say um, that if the high productivity regime didn't crash, so maybe there was no extinction uh, in this region, or maybe there is missing interval, or maybe this is just not the KPG boundary. How do we know this is the KPG boundary, if we, we can see this? So, of course, the first thing that we did is to look on the form, if you're asked. I'm just, not be the first thing that you can, you can do. Uh, and here you can see the plantic form municipera, plantic, plantic form municipera species range charge uh, along the study sequence. In green, it's the Cretaceous, and in pink, uh, orange is the Paleogene, and the black line uh, actually means species that is present uh, in the interval that species is. Uh, present. This is the name of all the species that we find in this section. And as you can see, there is very clear uh, extinction here that happened that occurred. So extinction did occur. So we are, um, and we can see here in the bottom, this is a Cretaceous species. And here we find um, a Paleogene species. Um, that uh, after the extinction, they are start to appear. So we are in, uh, in uh, the, so the platic form in FRC, see the KPG extinction event and the, the KPG is present in our uh, sequence. And now we ask him, did this section is full or, or there is some kind of hiatus or missing part of it? Uh, so let's do a little bit zoom in and for and do a, a detailed biostatigraphy. And this is a commonly used late Cretaceous plantic form different bisonation based on GTS 2016. And, and the time is divided to interval called bison based on the first appearance and last appearance of plantic form different biomarker. And which is actually uh, evolutionary burst and death of species. So this is the main uh, bio indicator that we are using it. We have the Plumerita and King Edis, uh, the first that first appear 160,000 years period of the KPG uh, boundary, around 66 million years ago. And, and then we have the extinction of most of plantic form in taxa, especially the one that we call global vulcanidum, uh, which are very beautiful and never return again. And afterward we have, and so this is the Gumbelitria is not here, but this is the species that did survive this uh, extinction. And we have the first, appearance of Yugibina, which occurred um, uh, 11,000 uh, years after, uh, sorry, the, the KPG event. So this is the main um, player. And let's see if we are identifying them in our um, section. So this is the extension and here we find a species that call a uh, pseudogumbelina reaensis from the base of the section, which implied that the age of the section is younger than 67.3 million years. And afterward, we find this plumerita and kininoidis, which uh, appear 160,000 uh, years before the KPG boundary. And then we have the extinction of all plant from Nifra that occurred 66.02 million years ago. Um, and after there is, we, we recognize the first appearance of Yugubina, uh, which is a very important 
because his time span is only 30,000 years. So if we, fo we found him, so we are very close to the uh, boundary. And then there is a lot more uh, Daniel species that appear along the sequence. So the age model, we found eight plantic foraminifera uh, biozone uh, defined in the, section, in the section, sorry, from the top of the Lake Maastrichtian Pseudogumbelina area and so on to the Denian P1 season. Uh, the studied se sequence spans uh, almost 4 million years. The boundary layer P0 was identified uh, and preserved in the, se the section. Uh, and in addition to the plantic foraminifera, we also did calcareous nanofossil zonation. And according to the calcareous nanofossil zonation, the KPG boundary was placed in the same place like uh, the uh, plantic foraminifera. So uh, we be sure that we found the, uh, the boundary without any uh, missing uh, section. Uh, the identification of P0 is very important in order to allow us to say that, that we have records of the time immediately after the KPG because it's very short. P0 is very, very short. It's the uh, periods when there is no plantic for Cretaceous plantic foraminifera and just before uh, the Denian uh, species began to, uh, to evolve. So it's first in, in our section, it's a four centimeter interval that probably uh, uh, present, uh, represents something like 11,000 years. Uh, so uh, as I said, the duration uh, of the, uh, the position normally is uh, calculated based on the uh, clay layer. Uh, and this is a calculation of how long this P0 uh, is uh, last. And it's, it's a, compar a comparison between a few set five locations around Tetis, uh, in Italy, in Spain, in Kiev, in Tunisia. Um, and they estimated the, uh, this period of the, uh, of the clay layer between six to 11,000 years when, based on helium isotope. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, we see the uh, extinction event. We are recording the KPG and we have P0, uh, but we are missing the clay layer in our section. And this is a big issue, why we are missing the, the clay layer. We can find it. Um, so if we look at the sedimentation rates uh, that calculated along the sequence, we see there is no change in sedimentation rates between uh, the Cretaceous and the Paleogen. You see here the sedimentation rate is uh, pretty much uh, the same. There is not a reduction in the TOC uh, content and in the TAC is pretty much uh, the same. High sedimentation rate uh, and high TOC uh, level and no significant differences acro across the boundary. And if we compare this profile to other profile in the Tethys, so uh, this is the Golan uh, profile here. Uh, the blue one is the Delta C13 uh, exertion, uh, uh, isotope uh, data. And the black one is the calcite concentration. And here in color is the sedimentation rates. And compared to Karkava, Elkef, and Gubbio, and you see the differences between um, all the section, all the three sections have reduction in calcite 
uh, exactly in the KPG boundary. And in our section in the Golan, we can see we can see a reduction in the calcite production uh, in the boundary. Uh, so actually, you see you see, you saw the 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 core which is black and homogenic. And, uh, and there is nothing, uh, uh, some of lithological uh, change. Uh, the Colan core display uniform lithology. Um, and the calcite component, as I show you before, but also here, is mainly, uh, is, is not changing along all the sequence. We see high uh, calcite uh, amount. And if we look, who is the calcite? What, what is the component of the calcite? So this is the same photo of the rock. And you see all this plate. This is a nanoplankton. The rock, uh, even this is a sample from the KPG uh, boundary itself from the P0. And you see we, the, it's full with a nanoplankton plate. And, uh, and this is very interesting because, uh, as I explained before, uh, the common dogma is that there, there was a crash of uh, the phytoplankton, especially of calcareous nanoplankton. There was no, not supposed to be uh, here. Um, not long ago, I hear a, a talk of Samantha Gibbs. Uh, and what she explained about cocolithophory uh, around the boundary, she found a change in the cocolithophory assemblages, uh, and she um, she offered that actually the nanoplankton change themselves from being a creature that do photosynthesis because uh, I don't know if the material or volcanic. But because someone turn off the light, they become a carnivores and they, they keep producing and keep alive, but they just stop doing photosynthesis. So this can explain what we are seeing. Um, but what happened? Uh, what else happened? Uh, and this is a Sorry, I may, maybe I didn't say this is a, explain why we didn't get a, a clay layer because there is no reduction in calcite production. Cocolithophorid, as you can see, still live during this time and uh, in, in big amount, there is a lot of plate of cocolithophorid in this uh, sample and this section. So they give the calcite and this is why we can't find uh, the clay layer, and this may be explanation of why all this year we can find the clay layer in the Negev, in Oraar. All the time we thought that this uh, layer is missing and the boundary is missing, but maybe the solution is that we just can't, we, we, don't, we, we don't stop producing carbonate, and this is why we don't have clay in this uh, sequence. So what happened? This is still an open question, but we know that the bottom water condition before and after the KPG were quite similar, as you can see here in all the graphs and all parameters. Um, they were sulfidic with stable redox condition as indicated by the sulfur trace metal. Uh, which imply that the preservation was also uh, stable and very high uh, preservation. And also the productivity was stable and very high. And this is why we can see change between the two periods. And the difference between the, three, the two periods is seen in the biomarker analysis which is the thing that we are still doing. Um, and then there is changes between the dinoflagellata and between the eukaryotes and the prokaryotes. But 
Nicholas, for next time, invite you Av Rosenberg, which will explain you about the biomarkers, which analysis that is just finished doing. Um, I will. Yes. <laughs> and he will answer this one. So what happened? Uh, so the remarkable observation from the Golan core is that the homogeneous and uh, lithology and the uniform ITOC and TIC and relative stable average uh, sedimentation rates and stable redox potential from the topmost Maastrichtian continue through the um, latest Maastrichtian and uh, through the Paleogene. Uh, this scenario of, uh, there is two possible scenarios that can explain this. The first one is the primary and expo uh, productivity did not collapse in the upwelling Tethys belt uh, during the KPG boundary and just uh, continue without any interfere, which is kind of revolution. So the conservative thing to say and the scenario uh, which we'll off we offer is a brief and short collapse of the primary uh, and expo, expo uh, productivity um, following by very rapid recovery um, and re-establishment of the uh, pre-existent uh, state uh, of the high productivity of the upwelling system. Um, this uh, scenario of rapid recovery are becoming more and more popular in the last years and in very agreement today. Uh, primary productivity in the aftermath announced by eutrophic condition of the Tethys upwind system uh, belt. This allowed opportunistic primary producer to flourish rapidly and um, to the high productivity to continue and interfere. Uh, another thing, the last thing that I we need to explain about this uh, section is the delta C C13 excursion, the negative one, which is a, a global marine character associated with the KPG. Uh, this excursion is related to the decrease uh, in the uh, photosynthesis and enrichment the uh, water with the light isotope, as you can see here. And as this is the, again, the comparison between uh, the Golan and other section in the world. And the Delta C13 is the blue line. And as you can see in all section, the exertion it happened exactly in the, uh, in the KPG boundary. And here in the Golan, uh, the drop in the Delta C13 is before and after uh, the KPG boundary itself. Uh, it's a bit earlier and later. And actually, what we see, we see two a coupling between the uh, two Delta C13 signals. Uh, of the TIC of the uh, organic matter and the unorganic matter. Uh, both of them influenced by the high flux of the organic carbon. However, um, since a uh, such, okay, I think, uh, so the uh, covariance in both uh, are accompanied by stable sedimentation rates, stable high calcite, and stable organic matter contents. So we said that the negative delta C13 exertion independent of marine primary productivity as it's normally uh, related in other uh, KPG uh, sequence in the world. Uh, we believe that the delta C13 exertion represent either evolutionary uh, or environmental changes uh, and actually, uh, maybe, uh, uh, sorry, um, 
a lot of CO2 in the atmosphere, maybe due to the, uh, the calm volcanism that enrich the water in the uh, light isotope. So uh, to conclude, um, I will say that organic matter, you, I, I, I try to show you that the organic matter and calcite production were highly uh, and relatively stable throughout the last uh, 160,000 years of the Maastrichtian and the first 250,000 years of the Danian. The plantic foraminifera exhibit uh, the common KPG uh, extinction uh, profile. Uh, the characteristic KPG delta C13 exertion in the Colan core is independent of primary and extra productivity. And the most important thing, uh, the remarkably uh, rapid, rapid recovery uh, of less than 11 uh, kilo years after the mass extinction. Uh, uh, this is unexpected, unexpected rapid recovery for very highly uh, productive ecosystem. But it's important, it's important to notice it have maybe a influence for our situation. Maybe, I don't know if 100 years of a, a photosynthetic a crash maybe cause this uh, extinction. This is very dangerous for us. So thank you for listening and to be continued. Thank you very much, Sarit. <clears throat> it was really, really um, very interesting talk and very straight to the point also for uh, what we're studying in marine geosciences. I, um, I leave the podium for um, for questions from the audience. Um, perhaps some students want to ask. Um, hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, this is me, Jen, and I want to ask a question related to the climate during this period. Uh, I know that uh, from the, the, the early period, it was uh, like uh, you know in the warming period of the of the earth and the climate. But after that, uh, after that extinction um, 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 uh, event, uh, is there any evidence that can see in the in the forest or something that can see the the temperature decrease or increase? Okay, the line was very, very bad. So I don't know that, I don't think that I understand everything that you said. So if someone can... Maybe you can write it in the chat instead. If, uh, because yeah. I didn't hear that also. And while he's writing the question, perhaps somebody else has a question as well. Yeah, can you hear me? Sorry, Gabriel, go ahead. Yes, go ahead, Gabriel. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation, uh, Sarit. Uh, it's uh, actually an interesting part that we find something that is different from the conventional one, uh, the, 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 the KPG boundary, which is very popular. Uh, but I have a couple of questions, maybe one or two. I don't know how much I can ask. The, the, the call that was taken, of course, you said that Golan Heights. I don't know. Well, I tried to look at the map just now of the coverage of the entire Golan Heights. I don't know if you add more than two core or three. How many? Um, there was there is it's one core, but you know when they drill in, they all the time they up one meters and then go and drill again. So it's one core, but it's separated into three parts. Okay. Okay. So uh, I, what I probably would just ask now, because I was thinking if you have more calls, I was expecting to see a correlation that would be consistent with the KP boundary missing of clay layer. But if it is one call, well, the, 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 the presentation says to be continued. 
I would uh, like a situation whereby if it's possible to correlate the same core to another side of the KP boundary, just because even in my country, it's difficult to find the KP boundary. And it's been a lot of uh, debate about it if it actually should be considered uh, a global phenomenon because there are still some local hotspots where productivity continues. So I don't, I, I don't think that would help my question, but again, good presentation. Thank you. Yeah. So we, we have only one core from the Golan. All the other cores uh, didn't reach the KPG or didn't uh, get deeper to KPG. Yeah, we have lower cores and upper core, but not core that crossed the KPG. This is the only one that, that crossed the KPG. And you're right, this is very unique uh, environment, the high productivity here in Israel. So maybe, you know, I think that now people start to, to believe that in heterogeneity model, that every place act a little bit different and maybe not every place uh, have the same characteristic, even in this massive. And, and I would be surprised if the, 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 the tectonic influence of the plates may also affect some of these things. I mean, the geology of that's the fault. Maybe it may also have an influence, but I don't know. That is an open question. Yeah. Everything having influence, but I think the main influence is the eye productivity, which was very intensive and very, very last, uh, long lasting. So, yeah. Yeah, very interesting, actually. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. We have a question of uh, Ming Yang um, that we couldn't hear well before. His question is Is there any evidence of the temperature changes? from the cores that could present this extinction event? Yes, yeah, so uh, we are now working on the stable isotope. We're picking from Nifra and we'll try to do on them the stable isotope analysis in order to reconstruct the, uh, the temperature. Uh, the problem, well, we never try in the Golan, but when we try to do stable isotope on this foraminifera in, in the Negev and in the, the Shvela section, um, the isotope was very, very light, probably because of the high organic matter that caused some uh, kind of diagenetic and interfered the, the, the real signal of the, of the foraminifera uh, oxygenized. But we will try to do it. We are now working on it. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. <clears throat> there is another student, Avinesh is asking, uh, I think, uh, well, I hope that I actually understand the question. If there were any time lag when the phytoplankton turns to carnivores? It's in the chat. What, again? If, oh, there, okay. if there were any time lag, when the phytoplankton uh, turns to carnivore? Uh, so I, this is a, 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 the, the thing with the carnivore, it's a very a new thing that I hear, uh, I don't know, a few months ago in a conference of the TMS. Uh, it's a paper of Alvarez et al. from 2019, and you can read it if you're interested in this part. Uh, they talk about this change in the life strategy of the Coccolithic group. Okay, so here is a clear question. I wanted to ask, as you mentioned, that since the Deccan volcanic ash in the atmosphere hindered the photosynthesis, so if it is so if it took time for them to turn to carnivores I think this is the question well he's sitting yeah. now in India so uh, he cannot probably talk so yeah 
So I, I, I just uh, threw to the air some idea, but I really don't work on Coca-Cola for read and how they change themselves. So I can't answer on this. Okay. Are there more questions? I think Beverly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not so good how my connection is. Hopefully you'll hear me. How are you, Sari? Nice to see you again. <laughs> I have a really, really, um, probably a very basic uh, technical question for, you know, for someone, since I only work with fairly recent foraminifera. When you're looking at the, the values that you're showing, um, are there also, is like what proportion of the forams in the sample are you working with? Are there a lot of species that are either unidentified or is there a proportion that... that okay, you know, it's, it depends. If I'm doing biostatigraphy, so it's enough that I will find one uh, species in order to identify a, a layer. Uh, but if I'm doing some ecology or environmental, so I need to collect 300 uh, specimens, at least from some kind of aliquot. But there is enough of plantic and plantic polyphera in this uh, samples. I guess I was thinking like the what you showed with the um, the extinct, the survivors, and the newly evolved. The rain chart. The yeah, you showed a figure that had the you know which ones went extinct immediately, which ones survived the transition. Yeah. Yeah. Like this one. Right. So right. this is the rain chart. And for this, I just go over sample after sample and just write who are the specimen species in each sample. I, okay. I don't so like them and I don't, and I don't count them. I just say who I'm seeing. Present apps. Okay, but this is the full range of all the species that you see. Yes. Like you're kind of. Yes. Nice. Okay. Okay, thank you. Nicola? Yeah, please go I ahead. Have a, I have a question. Sarit, do you know if there is any similar situation in other extinction, the perm Triassic extinction or, or any other? Uh, what, a uh, situation of? Uh, the same story, similar story. No, no. I, 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 we didn't, we don't know about this other uh, uh, section from different period with this kind of situation okay. of high productivity that continue without interference uh, during the mass extinction. Okay, you have something to do in the next 20 years. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay, <clears throat> I think that maybe we should uh, close the, um, today's seminar. And uh, Sarit, by the way, would you like uh, to be in our uh, list for future emailing of our seminar? Yeah, of course. Okay, yeah. great. Now that this is in Zoom, it's the most convenient Yeah, thing. great. And, uh, and also, I will. Uh, you will probably we will be in our YouTube channel, so I will send you the link. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. So everybody, see you next week. As normal. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You're welcome.